folks, Ariel over here at Fine F. It's another drizzly, snowflakey day outside, and so it seems like a good time to um, do another book review. This time, the book Whatever Happened to Penny Candy. Despite the fact that it's cold outside, it is actually way too warm in here by the fire, so I believe I'm going to open a window. Anyway, um, I've been trying to do book or other resource reviews of things I've found helpful over the years in case there's something you may find helpful as well and you've never heard of. Um, this book is a very slim little volume and it is, ooh, um, it, it probably changed my, or, or helped form because I probably didn't really have one yet, my whole perspective on how money and finances and the world around me works to a great degree. I think I was like 10 when I first read this, maybe 9, maybe 11, not sure. Um, it's part of an Uncle Eric series written by Richard Mayberry. My parents had these when I was growing up, obviously, and uh, I was pretty young when I read it. And it really just helped me get a good grasp at a young age. I'm so thankful I read it then, and I've read it several times since. Most recently, like a year or so ago, I read it out loud to Clay. It's not that long of a book, and even part of it, as thin as it is, is um, references and some quotes and, and basically extra stuff at the back. So this really doesn't take anybody very long to read, even if you're not a fast reader. But it did give me, I feel like, a very solid um, foundation for understanding how not just personal finances, because that's not really what this is geared toward, but how how financial systems and such work and how much of the world around me that affects. And I feel like that's uh, positioned me very well in life. So, um, because a lot of people are not uh, blessed to have had that kind of financial background, I thought I'd just read you a couple quotes out of here. This one is actually um, copyrighted by the estate of Shiel Silverstein. This is a little poem. I believe I remember my grandpa maybe quoting this poem to me, but it's also in this book. It's called Smart. My dad gave me one dollar bill, cause I'm his smartest son, and I swapped it for two shiny quarters, cause two is more than one. And then I took the quarters and traded them to Lou for three dimes. I guess he don't know that three is more than two. Just then along came old blind Bates, and just cause he can't see, he gave me four nickels for my three dimes, and four is more than three. And I took the nickels to Hiram Combs down at the seed feed store, and the fool gave me five pennies for them, and five is more than four. And then I went and showed my dad, and he got red in the cheeks, and closed his eyes and shook his head, too proud of me to speak. Um, that one has always made me laugh, but other than quoting poetry about money, there's a lot of fabulous info in this book. I should have bookmarked my... Uh, contents page. It covers money, coins and paper, the Romans, inflation, dollars, money, and legal tender. I'm just reading you the table of contents here, basically. Revolutions, elections, printing presses, wages, prices, spirals, and controls, wallpaper, wheelbarrows, and recessions, boom and bust cycles since the Civil War, fast money, history repeats, getting rich quick, the boom and bust cycle, how much is a trillion, the roaring 90s, federal debt chart, what's so bad about federal debt, an interest exercise, one reason government spends so much, etc. Um, so that gives you a little taste of what's in here. But I was also going to read you a few more little quotes um, that actually seem especially applicable to a lot of what's going on around us these days. But again, I'm so thankful to have had this in my memory bank, you know, for decades now. And this is actually the sixth edition now. I don't remember which edition I read when I was that young. It was, I don't know, the first or second or third or something. Uh, my parents still have their copies. I've since purchased my own copies. And this is part of an entire Uncle Eric series that is written simply enough. Um, they're written as like letters from an uncle to a teenage maybe nephew. Um, simple enough for a youngish child to understand, but not so dumbed down and childish by any means that, you know, somebody can't read it as an adult, which I have also done. Anyway, this uh, chapter talks a little bit about inflation, so here's a brief reading from it. Inflation is an increase... Oh, let's not start there. Let's start back just a second before. Um, so this actually makes sense. Uh, 
the Roman government, for instance, wanted to, I'm slightly summarizing here, <laughs> to get money for their, to fund their wars and buy clothing and food and such, and so it had to pay for them. So it needed money. The way all governments, including the Roman government, get the money they want is by taxing people. Taxing means taking money by force if necessary. And that's what the Roman government did. Tax, 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 take, take, take. People don't tend to like being taxed and they don't want the government to take their money. They hate taxes. Everyone does. The Roman people were no exception. The Roman government soon discovered a very unpleasant fact. When taxes get too high, people get mad enough to revolt and overthrow the government like the colonists did during the American Revolution. The Roman government dared not raise taxes any further, but it still needed money to pay for all the things it wanted. That was a tough problem, and most modern governments have the same problem today, how to get more money without raising taxes. There was a solution. The Roman government discovered counterfeiting. Counterfeiting is the making of phony money. The usual way to counterfeit nowadays is to print phony money on a printing press, but 20 centuries ago the printing press had not yet been invented. All money was metal coins, and the government had to make phony coins, and this is how it was done. The main coin used in the Roman Empire was the denarius, which was 940 fine silver, which is 94% silver. When the tax collectors brought the coins into the Roman government's treasury, the government would have the coins clipped. Clipping a coin means shaving the edges off. The shavings from the clipped coin were used to mint new coins. The government would then not only have the clipped coins, but the new ones too. It had a lot more money to buy the things it's want it wanted. But the Roman people were not stupid. They soon realized that some of their coins were too small and light. Some of the silver was missing. They either refused the clipped coins or they reduced the value. For instance, if you wanted a loaf of bread and the price, price was one denarius, the baker would either refuse to accept a clipped denarius or he would demand two clipped coins as a substitute for one coin. In later centuries, people developed an easy method for telling if a coin was clipped. They had notches cut in the edges. The coins were reeded. Any clipped coin was easily recognized because the reading was gone. And you may recognize this today from the way like the edge of a dime feels, that, that little rough bit. Um, that's where that started. So then we get to skipping a bunch there. Inflation is an increase in the amount of money. Inflation, inflating, increasing the supply of money causes the value of each unit of the money to go down. When the value of the money goes down, you need more of it to buy what you want, so prices rise. In the Roman Empire, it was not the value of food, clothing, and other things that was going up. It was the value of the denarius that was going down. Bread didn't cost 300 denarii because the bread was so valuable. It cost 300 denarii because the denarii was almost worthless. Um, you can probably see that happening around you today. Um, it's important to remember that even during times when there's no inflation, some prices rise and others fall. But inflation causes almost all prices to rise, and that's why we worry about it. It's also important to remember that inflation is not the same thing as rising prices. Inflation causes rising prices. Many people get confused about this. Um, then we get to... Wheelbarrow, wallpaper, wheelbarrows, and recessions. By now you're probably saying, but the world's government can't keep creating money forever. They must stop sometime. Prices can't rise forever. Let's look again at history. Inflation is not an unusual event. In fact, it's quite common. I'd say it happens about as often as major wars, earthquakes, and other troubles. When, an inflation, when inflation gets bad enough for prices to be rising rapidly every few hours, that's called runaway inflation. On the next page, there's a partial list of runaway inflations. Keep in mind, these are not just double-digit inflations, they are run runaway inflations, which are much worse. For instance, in Germany, a pound of butter cost 1.4 marks in 1914. By 1918, the price was 3 marks. Four years later, it was 2,400 marks. And the next year, it was 6 trillion marks, etc. In the Hungarian inflation of 1946, the money lost all its value. You could wallpaper a room more cheaply with money than with wallpaper. It took so much money to buy things that people had to carry cash in wheelbarrows. And so on. Anyway, that's just a brief... I'm not going to read you the whole book, though I could probably do that fairly rapidly since it shows short. That's just a brief look at a little bit of the history covered in here. And it goes through different times in history and this... The 6th edition came out, I don't even know if there's one since I had purchased this one. Um, this was a used one, I believe, when I got it. I tend to buy books secondhand. Uh, this was most recently the copy I have updated in 2010. So this has some, some commentary on things that happened during my lifetime since I first read this. Um, but 
I, I'm not even sure if there, he has published a newer edition since then, this or not. But anyway, if you want a really solid basic understanding that you could get as anywhere from a 10 year old to a 100 year old of how money systems work and how that may affect your life and your planning in life, I highly recommend this little volume, Whatever Happened to Penny Candy. I'll link to its listing down below and uh, you can find your own copy or call your local library, may well have it, um, you may have a friend who will loan it to you, whatever. But I do highly recommend this. And like I said, I think having read this when I was so young gave me a very solid foundation for understanding a lot of the workings of the world around me so far through the rest of my life. Hopefully that's helpful to somebody else. We hope you enjoyed it. Come back next time for more adventures. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.